I'm Robert Breaker, Missionary Evangelist of Spanish and English Speaking People, and today I want to look at this date of September 23rd, 2015. As I preach this message, today is August 26th, 2015. But for the last year, maybe a little longer, a lot of people all over the internet, all over churches, all over the world, have been talking about this one day in history, September 23rd, 2015. And they have all sorts of theories about what's going to happen on that day. But for some reason, they all talk about September of 2015 and all the things. You can actually go to the Internet now. I think the last time I saw there was a, an article about 33 things that will happen in September of 2015. And many people are saying this is the end of days. This is the, the, the end. This is the time when the rapture will take place and this time of Jacob's trouble will happen. Is that going to happen? I honestly don't know, but I thought it would be good to just look at what they're saying, because it's quite interesting. It very well could be, or maybe the calendar's wrong a year or two, and maybe it's on down the line. But as a Christian myself, I do believe that Jesus is coming, and something big is coming to this world. Something's going to happen that, ch that will change everything. I come across people all the time that aren't even Christians, and they say, I just feel it in my being that something big's about to happen, and it's scary, and I don't know what it is. I believe it was yesterday or the day before, there was a, a drop in the Dow Jones. Higher and low, I mean, a more of a drop than the world's ever seen. And the Dow Jones ended at 1,000, or no, 15,666 and change. Why was the number 666? the last number of the Dow Jones. You see, a lot of people are thinking, look, we are in the last days when the Antichrist will come, and God is showing us some things. So is that what, what is happening? Well, let me just run down the list of, of things that I've found as I look through a lot of YouTube videos and things that are happening, because there are so many things going on, and that will be going on in September, it's worthy of a little bit of study, of looking at these. And you can decide for yourself what you think. You might think, no, we've got 20, 30 more years left. Okay. Or you might think, yep, this is it. The rapture is coming, September 23rd, like so many say. It doesn't hurt to look at what people are saying, and let's make up our own mind. Let's decide for ourselves. So many are talking about this September 2015, and many say, well, I can feel something big is going to take place. What's going to be happening? Well, I've gone on the Internet and got a, just a long list of some things that are supposed to take place in September, and I'm just going to go down the list. Because some things are, are interesting. Some things are things that happen all the time. But it's interesting these things just so happen to correspond with certain dates. For example, September 23rd is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. What are the odds that it would fall this year on that date? Every year it falls on a different date because the Jewish calendar is different from our calendar. Well, September 13th, and I'm going down my list here, there's supposed to be a partial solar eclipse. Now people say, well, that's no big deal. That happens all the time. Really? Okay. September 14th, there will be the sounding of the shofar in Israel. And in September uh, 14th, when they blow that trumpet, the Jews say that they will be celebrating the 6,000th year from the time of Adam. Now I found that on the internet. The Jews will be sounding a trumpet, and they're saying it is 6,000 years from Adam and the, and the beginning of creation. How interesting. Well, if you get a chance, go to cloudchurch.org and look up on my website there. And uh, look up a, a message that I preached not too long ago about the 7,000 years of human history. And how it all lines up. And how interesting that the Jews are now saying, yep, yep, September 14th will be the 6,000th year of history from Adam. From creation. Interesting. September 14th will also be the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, and on that feast they, they blow the trumpets. Rosh Hashanah. September 14th is also, now this is an interesting one, what they call the year of Anno Lucius. Anno Lucius, the year of light. All the Luciferians, all the Satan worshippers, all the devil worshippers are so happy that the Anno Lucius, the, the year of light, is coming. Why is that? Well, I seem to remember in the Bible it talks about that when the devil comes, he shows up as an angel of light. Could there be a connection? Could it be just a coincidence? Okay. So September 14th starts what many call the year of Anno Lucius, the year of light. September 14th is the first day 
of Wall Street trading after the end of the Shemitah year. Now, if you're not familiar with the Shemitah years, you need to find out about this. Uh, a guy named last name of Khan wrote a book about it, C-A-H-N, I believe. And every seven years, God does something, the Bible says, and every seven years, something happens. And it's incredible that seven years ago, there was a market crash, and then here a couple days ago, seven years later, there was a stock market crash. It seems like every seven years, something like that takes place. So how interesting that the Shemitah will end September 14th, and then Wall Street will start trading again. Will, will they crash? Will they collapse? A lot of uh, very well-known economists say in September, the entire economy of the world, that's it, it's over, it's all collapsing. Interesting, will that take place? September 15th, now this is a scary one. September 15th will be the 70th session. September 15th, the 70th session of the United Nations. So the 70th session. The United Nations is 70 years old. And they will be celebrating their 70th session on September 15th. And September 15th, when they get in session, the United Nations says the first thing we want to do is bring up this subject of Palestine, and we want to make Palestine its own nation, its own country. If you get a chance, you can go to YouTube or you can go to Cloud Church and look up one of my videos where I preached Free Palestine. That's the title, Free Palestine. Is there such a state as Palestine? Does God say that Palestine is a nation and those people can't have that land? Or did God say, no, no, that land belongs to Israel? And way back over here, 3,500 years ago at least, to Abraham, God promised that land forever. So that's interesting that it seems like it's all starting to, to come together, all the prophecies in the Bible, so they can be fulfilled in the future after the rapture. Another thing that's interesting, September 15th, if you've ever lived in a Spanish-speaking country, September 15th is called La Dia de Independencia, the Day of Independence. Simon Bolivar fought against the Spaniards and won independence of all of Central and South America. How interesting that the UN wants to take that day to talk about giving Palestine their own nation. And yet, many people throughout the world call that a day of independence. Could it be that Palestine does become a nation on that date? And they go around saying, we've got independence, we're free, we have our own country, our own nation. September 15th, also, the Jade Helms exercises end. And if you've never heard of Jade Helm, it's the largest military operation ever in the United States of America, in the history of America. Soldiers are all in the streets, and they're doing their little drills, and, and they're doing their things. Many times, they're hidden what they're doing. They don't want people to see out in the open what they're doing, but they're doing drills. And those drills started, I believe it was July 15th, and they end September 15th. September 16th, this wicked, wicked woman named Madonna has a concert at Madison Square Garden. And if you follow Madonna at all, and I hope to God you don't, many of her concerts are nothing more than evil Satanism. It's almost like she's practicing witchcraft on the stage in a lot of the ways that they dress up, and it's, it's perverted, it's disgusting, it's not Christian. And there's a theme to her concert. If you go online, you look up this concert, and, and she's doing this concert, and she's singing these songs, and the theme of her concerts are the desecration of the bride and the coming of fallen angels. <laughs> Why would a singer sing about fallen angels? I thought you know, people like that didn't believe in God and the Bible. And why would they want to sing about desecrating a... Oh, 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 the church is called the bride of Christ. So if really there is a rapture coming, of course you'd want her to sing about the desecration of the bride because she doesn't like the bride of Christ. That makes, that makes sense, but how... No, it's just another coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Let's just chalk it up to a, to a coincidence that, that she would sing about uh, 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 the desecration of a bride and of fallen angels. Well, September 17th, the Federal Reserve usually uh, meets in, in, in September... And this is when they're expected to meet, September 17th, to do rate hikes on interest rates. And so the Federal Reserve most likely will do rate hikes and most likely make this happen, which is bad news for us, especially people who are in debt who have to pay interest rates, they'll have to pay more. 
September 17th is also Constitution Day. Let's all celebrate the Constitution. Constitution Day. How interesting. September 18th is also a day that many Christians have set aside, and they've called it the Days of Awe. And many Christians have said, we want to come together in Sandpoint, Idaho, and we're going to call for a national day of prayer and repentance. September 18th. And I skipped one. September 17th was the deadline for the Iran deal. Obama's Iran deal, which he pretty much gives Iran everything they want so they can have a nuclear bomb. And that's the deadline in which Congress has to vote yay or nay on this deal. Will they? Well, they probably will. Because uh, that deal helps fulfill Bible prophecy when Iran becomes powerful enough that they have a nuclear weapon and Israel has to defend itself from that nation. It's interesting, all these things that are going to happen in the future, they all have ties to Bible prophecy. September 21st is the Hajj, or the pilgrimage to Mecca, which many Muslims go to Mecca. So you have all these Muslims that will be traveling on September 21st to Mecca. Now, September 21st also, according to the United Nations, has been declared the UN International Day of Peace. And I've read somewhere online that when they meet together in their 70th session, they plan on discussing peace and security. What? Well, the Bible says peace and safety. And the Bible warns us when they start talking about peace and safety, it says, then sudden destruction <laughs> cometh. Now, if you're a Christian, this ought to scare you, but it also ought to encourage you. As you read your Bible, watch out for peace and safety, peace and safety, because then sudden destruction cometh. And you've got all these economic people, uh, economists, warning of a global collapse. What would happen if there was a global collapse? Sudden destruction? People be rioting in the streets and everything else. So interesting how all these things are happening at the exact same time. September 22nd is also in Islam the day of Arafat, where they want to get together and remember that man who was, oh my goodness, who was a very, very evil, evil man, Yasser Arafat. September 23rd, the very last day of summer. And I was looking up, when was the fall equinox, or when does the autumn equinox start? Why? <laughs> the beginning of fall, the fall equinox is September 23rd, 2015. It's the very first day of fall. And how interesting that you've got Madonna going around singing about the desecration of the bride and the welcoming of fallen angels. I wonder if there'll be any fallen angels coming around that time. It's a possibility. September 23rd is also the 70th Jubilee of the Day of Israel. And I've written that up here. Now, a Jubilee is 50 years. Every 50 years, they remember a Jubilee. Well, way back here in the Bible, we find what's called the Exodus. And Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, and God gave them their own land. That was about 3,500, grounded off, years ago. So if you count every 50th year, you come to 70th Jubilee of Israel. I spelled Israel wrong here. Let me spell it right. So 70 Jubilees of Israel from when they gained their land, way back here, was it 14, 1500 B.C., something like that. This is exactly the 70th Jubilee of the nation of Israel on September 23rd, 2015. Which, by the way, September 23rd is Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur is the Feast of Atonement. The Feast of Atonement. What are the odds... God gives this people called Israel certain feasts to keep throughout history. And there's only three main ones, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, Passover, and Pentecost. But yet all of a sudden, these really key dates happen exactly on the very day of the feast. And the 70th Jubilee, something that took almost 3,500 years to happen, just so happens by coincidence to fall on their feast day of the Feast of Atonement. Wow, interesting. You know, no, that wasn't planned by any kind of a creator or anything. No, no, oh no, that's just pure coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you remember, 
a year or so ago, there was a French, I want to say prime minister, he might have been the French secretary of state, he said, and he was talking, he says, we have to combat global uh, c climate change, and he said, we only have 500 days to combat this global problem of climate change. And a lot of people listen to that speech and say, what's he talking about? What does he mean 500 days? So they started adding up what he said, and they found out the end of the 500 days is, you guessed it, September 23rd. <laughs> September 23rd, 2015. What was he talking about? We only have 500 days, and the last of the 500 days falls exactly on September 23rd. What, is, what does he know that we don't know? Why would he say that? Why does everything seem to point to September 23rd, 2015? What is this all about? I tell you, if you're not a believer in God and the Bible, you should be. Something big is going to happen in this world. So September 23rd is the end of the 50th or 500th day that this man said to watch for. September 23rd is also the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Adha, the Feast of Sacrifice. And the Muslims, they believe in sacrificing animals, just as the Jews. And so they begin their feast of animal sacrifice. Now, September 23rd also is an interesting day because the Pope shows up. And guess where the old Pope is going to show up? He's going to show up in the White House. And on September 23rd, this Pope, this Jesuit Pope, is going to go and talk to Obama in the White House. And what's interesting is he's showing up exactly on the 266th day of the year. Now, you know what's interesting? The 266th day of the year is when this Pope shows up to talk to Obama. But if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, you should know this. The gestation period of a human being is exactly 266 days. <laughs> 40 weeks, some say. It's more like 38. But anyway, 266 days. Whoa. How, how does this... Is that coincidence? I mean, come on. Something's going on there. A lot of people that are on the internet with their YouTube videos are pointing this out and saying, this is, this is on purpose because this will be the birth of the New World Order. Could be. This Pope has been telling people we need a global government. Well, the Bible talks about a global, global government, but it says that we that are Christians won't be a part of it. We're raptured out. If you get a chance, go to Cloud Church or go to YouTube and look up my video about what the Bible says about the New World Order. Because it is in the Bible. It is prophesied. But the good news is, if you're a Christian, you don't have to go there. So, could the rapture be on September 23rd, like many, many, many Christians are saying and claiming? It's a possibility. A lot of people say September 23rd will be the day of the rapture. Now, another interesting thing is CERN. If you've never heard about CERN, you need to look up CERN. CERN is the giant Hadrian, I guess it's called, Hadrian, however you call it, uh, particle collider in Switzerland. And what's interesting is CERN is the name of the town in Switzerland. Okay? They changed the name of the town to call it CERN, after this gigantic huge particle collider in which they take particles and they shoot them at high speeds and, and, and let them explode. And what they're trying to find, they say, is the God particle. How come all this seems to tie back to God? Interesting. Well, anyway, so CERN, they have to power up this machine and it takes months and months to power up this machine. And when they power it up, they see weird things happening. The last time they powered it up, they said they could see faces inside and, and they said it almost makes like a porthole or a gate and, it, it, and they see things happening when these things are spinning around at high speeds. But CERN, Switzerland, used to be named a different name. As a matter of fact, where that place stands today, CERN, it, it stands on a place where there used to be an ancient temple to Apollos. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Apollos, why the Bible talks about Apollyon. He said he'll come from, the, he'll be like the angel from the bottomless pit. Bottomless pit. I've always wondered in the Bible, what is a bottomless pit? Well, picture a porthole, and they begin to suspend it around, and, and they say, this is the scientists that work on CERN, that it can open a door to an, another dimension. What if it opens the door to the gates of hell? If you go over to, to the CERN office, there's a gigantic statue to the false god, Shiva. Who is Shiva? 
Shiva was the god of destruction and chaos. And the god who was supposed to build order out of chaos. Look, I can't make this stuff up, man. This is crazy. So you've got this thing called CERN, and they're already now firing up this hydrogen particle collider, and they're built on top of the old ancient temple of Apollyon. They worship Shiva, and they're saying, well, we want to open a door to something. And they say, we don't know exactly what will happen, but if we continue doing this. You know, the last, one of the last times they, they fired up CERN, it caused an earthquake over in Japan. Yeah, you ever heard of it? Fukushima? Yeah, the Fukushima earthquake just so happened to take place while CERN was in operation. So, something creepy is happening with this thing called CERN. If you get a chance, go to YouTube, look up a study about CERN and what it is and what they're doing over there. They claim to have seen faces come out of that big round circle when they have it fired up. That's interesting. You can find stuff like that on the internet as well. So what is CERN? Why are they doing this? Could it be it's a gate or a porthole? The Bible tells us in the last days there's an appointed time in which these four angels come out of a bottomless pit. What if that appointed time was September 23rd, 2015, and these people were doing it? You say, that's nuts. Hey, I'm, you think that's crazy? You go watch on the, online in your own, uh, by yourself, at what these scientists are saying. Because these scientists that have started CERN and behind it, they all say our goal is to open a door and open a porthole. And this is the key to opening it. And they all worship a false god named Shiva. And they built their gigantic particle collider over the ancient temple of Apollyon. You know, I read the Bible and it's like, wow... Looks like things are starting to, to line up a little bit there. Um, another thing you can do is go online there and YouTube and other places and, and look up a, a thing called iPet Goat 2. It is a very, very weird video that a man made. And it ties into CERN. And the video is almost demonic because it, it, it shows a coming in of a false Christ. Uh, I believe the Bible calls him the Antichrist. <laughs> and according to the Bible, the Antichrist will reign after the rapture in this time period known as the tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. So it's just, it's just interesting how all these things just point to the Bible and point to September 23rd and point to the coming of Jesus because there will be an Antichrist. So Christ must return for his church before the Antichrist comes. You say, oh, I don't believe in any of that. Well, that's fine. You believe what you want to, but you can't deny the facts. And when you start looking at all this, it, it starts to paint a picture of, wow, we are truly in the last days. So September 24, CERN runs at full power. After being started up, it will, con it will run completely at four, full power. Now, on September 24, something else will happen. The Pope will address the United States Congress on September 24th. He visits Obama September 23rd, and then he goes to the United States Congress on September 24th, and he addresses the United States Congress. Never in the history of the world has a pope ever come to America and addressed the senators and the representatives. This will be a first in human history. Why will he do that? I don't know. September 24th, Madonna will also be in Philadelphia playing her concert in which she glorifies fallen angels and she desecrates the bride. Now why do you mention that? Well because a little later we see the Pope in Philadelphia. It's interesting, it seems like wherever the Madonna goes, oh, excuse me, Madonna goes, I said the Madonna because you might realize that, that Popes and Catholics worship the Madonna and this Madonna is a false Madonna. But anyway, uh, wherever she's going, it seems like the Pope shows up a week or so later. So back in September of uh, 16th, she's in Madison Square, Square Garden in New York City. And uh, then the Pope's going to go to Madison Square Garden not long after that. And we'll get to that in a minute. So you got the Madonna, uh, excuse me, the, the woman called Madonna, and September 24th, playing a concert in Philadelphia. I seem to remember in the Bible there was a church called the Church of Philadelphia. I wonder if that means anything. In September 25th, the Pope then goes to the United Nations and addresses the United Nations. So September 23rd, the Pope speaks to the President and visits the White House. September 24th, the Pope goes to the United States Congress 
and addresses our leaders. And then the 25th, the Pope goes to New York City, stands up in front of the entire world in the United Nations, and after their 70th session, and addresses the whole world. How interesting. What, what is that? Then he holds a mass in Madison Square Garden on September 25th. Well, that's the same Madison Square Garden where the Madonna has celebrated her singing and her adoration of fallen angels and the desecration of the bride. Well, interesting. Well, Pope visits Philadelphia in September 26th. And then on September 27th, and all these things are things that are supposed to take place in September. September 27th, there will be what's called the Tomorrowland Festival in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Now, if you don't know what this Tomorrowland Festival is, you need to look it up. On YouTube, there's videos all over of what this Tomorrowland Festival is. And it's nothing but a gigantic party where people come out and get drunk. But in this so-called huge party, there's this gigantic stage with this face, and the face says it's a machine. And it starts out in times past, we had people that visited us, and they left us the key to unlock the door. What? Key to unlock the... What are they talking about? It's almost satanic. It looks almost like, like something the Antichrist would put out. Gnosticism or whatever. So the Tomorrowland Festival is a gigantic, strange, odd festival that's happened all over Europe and is now finally in America. And it looks like it's, it's a glorification of sin. Fornicating and dancing and drinking and adoring this gigantic figure who came out of a door. Hmm, hmm, Apollyon comes out from a door. Interesting. Well, then you get to September 28th, the last date on my list of things that will take place in September. And September 28th is the fourth of the Blood Moon Tetrad, and it takes place on September 28th, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I don't know if you know what these, these Blood Moons are, but these blood moons have taken place only about six or seven times throughout history. And what they are is they are moons that actually literally turn red over Israel. And it just so happens they take place on each of the feast days of Israel. Now what are the odds that that would take place? You know, God said in the Bible that he made the sun and the stars and the moon. And he gave them for times and for seasons and for signs. And there are signs in it, and if you understand the Bible and you see these signs, then you know, oh, God's about to do something. Well, all throughout history, about the first time uh, when they actually meant anything to us was around 1490, um, 1493, these blood moons showed up. And when they did, the people of Israel that were dispersed throughout the nations were kicked out of Europe. 1492, 1493... All of Europe said, we don't want you Jews, and they kicked them out. The next time that these blood-red tetrad moons showed up was in 1948. Any idea what happened in 1948? Oh, yeah! That's when Israel became a nation. So interesting that these red moon tetrads always correspond with something that applies to Israel. Matter of fact, these blood-red moons showed up again in 1967-68. Well, my dad was alive then, and he remembers the Six-Day War, a time when Israel was attacked by their enemies, but miraculously, they were able to recuperate a lot of their land. And they won. And it just so happens there were some red moons. Well, here we go with these blood-red moons in 2014 and 2015. So if the last several times, every time these showed up, and every time they fell on the Feast of Israel, something happened big for the nation of Israel. Does that mean something big is going to happen for the nation of Israel as well? Could it be that this is pointing to the rapture at a time when God goes back to dealing with Israel? Could it be that Israel gets their temple built and is able to worship in their temple? You see, the Bible teaches in a tribulation after the rapture there's seven years. And the Bible tells us that the first seven years, which is three and a half, they're worshiping in their temple. In the last three and a half years, they're kicked out. What if uh, the rapture was in September, on the 70th Jubilee? And then they were cast out, and the Antichrist came in. And the last three and a half years, the Bible tells them to flee. Jesus talks about this in Matthew chapter 24. 
And what if they were kicked out in 2018 celebrating the 70th anniversary of their nation? And that's when they have to get kicked out. I seem to remember an Old Testament verse back in the book of Daniel where God says, Seventy years are determined upon thy people, O Israel. And then it tells us about Daniel's 70th week, the last seven years. So all these things have been prophesied in the Bible. The only thing is, is September 2015 when it's all going to come to pass? Everything that's been prophesied, that's when it's going to take place? I don't know. Now, if you look up here, I wrote something up here, and I'm not a good artist, but this is a candlestick. And a lot of people are online now, and they're making videos about September 23rd, and I'm sure they make a good income from it. If you, you, know, you have your little um, advertisements there, you can make some money on YouTube videos, I guess. I don't know if I've ever made too much, but, um, but I never hear them talking about the candlestick. You know, there's a lot of things that point to September 23rd. And one thing I forgot to mention was September 23rd is around about the time of the, of the birth of Jesus. A lot of people say, no, Jesus was born on December 25th. That's not true. The Catholic Church changed the date of when Jesus was born. That, if you'll read Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, and there's many other books, that was the date of Saturnalia, the date of Tammuz, the date of Nimrod for his birthday. And as paganism and Christianity mixed through the Catholic Church, they changed the times and the dates. And so today they celebrate Christmas, and they celebrate it on December 25th, but that was never Jesus' birthday. If you look at it, Jesus' birthday was, a, was somewhere between September 21st and 23rd. And guess what? That, that's September 23rd. Huh. Okay, so what, how do we know that? Well, I don't have time to get into that. But the Bible tells us about when Jesus was born, and it tells us about when John the Baptist was born. And, and Jesus was conceived three months after John the Baptist. And so you go through, you line them all up. It's interesting. It all falls on the fall, winter, spring, and summer equinox. John the Baptist was conceived on the summer solstice around June 21st. Jesus was conceived, excuse me, six months later, not three months. I was, I was incorrect. If you read the Bible, it was six months between John the Baptist and Jesus. The winter solstice was when Jesus was conceived. So Jesus was conceived in December, December probably 25th. Now, John the Baptist was born in, the, in March, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, and it all, they all fall on, on these feast times. Jesus was born in the fall equinox in around September. Now you say, how do you prove that? Well, how could Jesus have been born in a manger in December? It would have been too cold. There were people that were shepherds in the fields that saw the star when Jesus was born. And so they must have had their sheep in the, in the fields in the wintertime. They don't keep sheep in the fields. So obviously it can't be December. So, so Jesus' birthday is around September 21st to 23rd. And it just so happens that it, it corresponds with the fall equinox. Which is interesting because he fell down from heaven. Or maybe he was sent would be a better word, not fall. But he came down from heaven to be born of a virgin. So you look at the Bible and you look at these things, and I've known for years that September 23rd was an important date because to me that's when Jesus was born. That was the birth date of my Savior. He was born around September 23rd. And how interesting that this year, 2015, it just so happens that that day is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Interesting. Why did it fall on that day? Well, I want to look at these candlesticks because what if God hid the day? of the rapture in the Old Testament. And what if it was hidden in this candlestick? When I went to Bible school, they taught me that there are a lot of hidden truths in the Bible. <laughs> and this just might be one of them. Let's look at this. Let's go to Exodus chapter 26. And I'm just throwing this out here. You can take it or leave it. But it is interesting how the candlestick that God made for Israel just might be showing the date of when Jesus comes at the rapture. Or, you can look at it this way, the date in which Jesus goes back to dealing with the people of Israel. Because you see, the rapture has to take place and the church has to leave in order for God to go back to dealing with Israel. So go back to Exodus chapter 26. Go to Exodus 26. 
and verse 31 through 37. The Bible tells us this, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other. Okay, so three out this way, three out that way. Three bowls made like into almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds with the other branch with a knop and a flower, so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like into almonds with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and, and, and it goes on. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All of it shall be of beaten work. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. So something about this candlestick gives light. And the way this candlestick is made, God says you're going to make seven different places for a candle to fit. So you can just imagine there's candles. You know what's interesting is in the book of Revelation we read about this candlestick in round about the time period of what's going to be taking place here where God is putting out the trumpets and the vials and the cups and his wrath. So interesting that it points back to that candlestick. Now according to this passage this candlestick has certain knops. How many knops are there in this candlestick? Well there's seven. Now seven corresponds with September. Because in the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, that seventh month in Hebrew is the ninth month in our calendar, which is September. Interesting. So how many knops are there? Let's, let's just count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two! Twenty-two knops. I guess if you counted the bottom one, it'd be 23. How interesting. So that takes us to 922 or 923. Depends on how you want to count it. Could God have shown in that candlestick the date of his coming? Now they taught me that in Bible school, and I didn't really think anything of it until everybody started talking about 923. And then I remembered, huh, 923, that... You can find that number, 922 or 923, if you look at the knops and 7, if you take the 7 and make it into a 9, because 7 is the 7th month of Israel. And yet, this thing here gives light. I mean, I could go deeper into that, but it, it's just interesting. When you look through the Bible, there's a lot of things that point to September. There was a song years ago uh, by Green Day. <laughs> You know, I don't like to listen to secular music. I mean, I loved it before I was saved. But they wrote a song called, Wake Me Up When September Ends. You can look it up on YouTube. But it's interesting in that song, when it says, Seven years have come and gone. Seven. Why are you talking about September and seven years? Seven, seven years is the number in the tribulation of years. Wake me up when September ends. What are they saying? Because that's when... They get started in their kingdom with the Antichrist. So everybody's waiting till September. There's a famous singer that came out and he said, he said, life begins when the church leaves. I believe that was Jay-Z, if I remember correctly. Why are all these secular lost rock groups talking about September and talking about the leaving of the church and talking about how they can't wait to rule in their kingdom? Where are they getting this all from? Is it from the Bible? No, they don't read the Bible, so they must know some fallen angels that are talking to them and telling them, hey, get ready, things are coming really fast. There's going to be a new world order, and you guys are going to reign with me. But little do they know, they're not going to reign but for seven years. And then they're going to pay, because the Bible says that Jesus Christ comes back at the Battle of Armageddon and destroys his enemies. And he sets up his kingdom, the millennial kingdom, where he reigns for a thousand years. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that definitively September 23rd will be the rapture. It's a possibility. I will say it's a possibility. But, you know, I don't know if the calendar's right. There's been people that say our calendar is four years off. And there's been people saying, you know, that it's a year off. And, and who knows if our calendar is right. So all this is whether or not our calendar is right. 
But it is so interesting. The Bible says in one of those Old Testament books that in the last days knowledge to, shall run to and fro upon the earth. We have a thing called the Internet where everybody and their grandmother can make a video on YouTube and tell you, this is something that I learned, or this is something that I heard, or God showed me this last night as I was reading the Bible, and all this knowledge can come together, and somebody like me, a nobody, can give you a list of things that people have said will happen in the future, and they all seem to just point to a climatic event of the church leaving so that the Antichrist can take over. I honestly don't know what will happen in September 23rd, but I tell you what, it is interesting, and I'm looking forward to it. And if it is indeed the day of the rapture, then you, friend, need to be prepared. Because you sure don't want to be left behind in this time period. The Bible says there will be a great earthquake, there will be a wormwood, uh, kind of a comet falling from heaven, which, by the way, I forgot to mention on the list, NASA has said that they expect a gigantic comet to hit Earth around about... Guess which date? You guessed it. Around about September 23rd. Now, I don't know about that. The planet Nibiru or Planet X that other videos on YouTube talk about. I kind of stay away from that stuff because it's, it's a little weird. But I do know that the Bible says there will be wormwood and it'll hit the earth. Sounds like a meteor to me. So the question is, and the most important question of all is, are you saved? Are you a Christian? Do you know where you'll go when you die? If this is indeed true, and the rapture is coming soon, do you want to go? Well, there's only way, one way to go at the rapture, and that's to believe the gospel of salvation. I'll give that to you very quickly, and then I'll close. But you need to realize something big is going to happen in this world. It's all headed to a conclusion, and the ultimate conclusion is the Battle of Armageddon. Now, this is going to take place first. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'll, I'll just endure to the end and I'll go through the tribulation. Well, the Bible says if you go through the tribulation, you're going to have to take a mark. And if you take that mark, which is the mark of the beast, which, by the way, is in the hand or the forehead, and which, by the way, they're already giving people marks in their hand. They, they pinch the skin right here, and they inject an RFID chip right there. They're already chipping people with a mark, just like the Bible said they would do. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So, if you go through that time period, the Bible says you're going to have to cut your hand off if you want to be saved. You're going to have to die as a martyr with your head cut off and die for Jesus. You know, it sounds like it's a lot better to get saved over here so you don't have to go through that. So, how do you get saved? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is what the Bible calls the gospel. And it's really sad that there's so many people out there today that call themselves Christians they don't even know where the gospel is in the Bible. But without a doubt, this is the gospel. Because it begins by saying, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So here it is. This is the gospel. What does the word gospel mean? It means good news. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is that Christ died for our sins. How did Jesus die? Well, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. God is a God who has always demanded blood for sins. If you don't have blood to cover your sins, you can never be forgiven. Ephesians 1.7 says, Whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says Jesus Christ died for our sins and he was buried. But great, how great it is that even though God was buried, he didn't stay dead. The Bible says he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that's where Jesus Christ is now. He's up in heaven. And that's what the rapture is all about. He's going to come back and get his bride. His bride is the church, all people who are saved. And he's going to take all those Christians who have believed the gospel, he's going to take them to heaven with him. Are you one of them? Are you saved? Do you know it? Beyond any shadow of a doubt, do you know that you're on your way to heaven? I hope so. 
Maybe you're watching this and you're lost and you've never thought about all these things, but, but you know about September 23rd, you've all heard all the scuttlebutt and everything about it on the internet, but you never thought about the spiritual aspect. You know, there are things that will physically take place on September 23rd. But this date isn't about all those physical things. This day is a day about the spiritual things. Will you be taken to heaven when Jesus comes? Are you spiritually prepared? Are you saved? If not, please get saved. I don't want to see you left behind to go through the New World Order. I preached all this because it's all over on the internet. It seems like everybody wants to talk about this. But nobody seems to want to talk about this. The day of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for your sins. Nobody seems to want to talk about the gospel and the way of escape, the way of salvation, so you don't have to go through the tribulation. It's all through Jesus Christ. It's all through His blood. It's all through trusting Him as your Savior. I pray you be saved. I pray you trust Him as your Savior. If you have more questions or you just don't understand, go to the Cloud Church, thecloudchurch.org. Look up some of my other videos about salvation and the gospel and imputed righteousness and justification, how to be saved. Because your soul is important. And I want to see you saved. God wants to see you saved. God doesn't want anyone to go through this. So consider this a warning. You can be saved today by trusting the gospel, trusting the blood of Jesus Christ. I appreciate you watching. I hope this has been a blessing. I hope you share this with as many people as possible. Because exciting times are ahead and they're less than a month away. be interesting to see what happens in September 23rd, 2015. God bless you. We'll see you next time.